Hi. <laughs> So let me um, pull up the agenda for today. I put something uh, on this list. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 <clears throat> I said I will, I will uh, uh, publish my notes uh, with the code, but uh, I didn't have time to, to finish it. And uh, now I want to uh, give some introduction from the, for, for the last session. Oh, okay. <laughs> And I hope this will be like interesting because I have I have examples in uh, in TypeScript but also in Idris. So. Okay. So here, let me just share my screen real quick. So, um, see what we have here for viewers as well. So let's see here. So I'm sorry, Tomislav, you said that you oh you had an introduction to monads or uh, for the for the next time next time so, okay. so yeah so all of this is preparation to uh, understand these hard hard kind of types and uh, uh, because uh, with hard kind of types this is exactly where we, where we can see uh, this monad abstraction okay okay and and which one of so with the under <clears throat> June second for today. Uh, which one of these um, do you feel we want to go over? Uh, about uh, higher kind of types. So last time uh, I was showing examples with higher kind of types, but I didn't really say what they are. So I, okay. I want to I want to be more specific. Uh, I, I, I also I will present uh, like a different view uh, of the generics and, and polymorphism. So, okay, so, which I think is very very important. So today we're going to go over higher kind of types, introduction to monad. So I'll, I'll yeah. There you go. So the screen's all yours. Thanks. Hey, so, Raphael. Welcome. Hi, Raphael. Hi. So last time I was talking about uh, this code. So uh, I, I have all of this code now uh, with uh, additional comments. And this is what we what we were uh, uh, doing last time. So, uh, at the end, I was explaining uh, how we can abstract this f, right? This f and g. So we can we can have, uh, uh, as I said, this is like a type uh, type level variables. So I, I want to explain what, what I mean uh, and how can I say this is a variable, right? Because we know that variables are like. On the value level, we, we have we are assigning uh, values. So I started uh, to extend this example to to have some kind of introduction. Uh, what I mean by uh, type level variables. So uh, as the as the as the the simplest languages, uh, we we have uh, dynamically type language, right? Which uh, doesn't allow you to to specify type. Uh, in the syntax at all. So, so in, in JavaScript or, or Python, this kind of uh, uh, function, this is like a very, very simple function. It's not, it, uh, what function is doing is not important. So, so we just have one parameter to this function and we cannot specify what is the type. We, are just, we can call this with whatever type and uh, with, 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 uh, with uh, whatever value and uh, the type of this X will be what is the type of the value. So, uh, so we don't have we don't have this notion of uh, type level thing. Uh, so, so, the, so the next step uh, from from completely dynamically uh, type language uh, is uh, uh, to be able to specify some types, or or or, or uh, if if we are able to specify types, uh, what what this means? Uh, so, from the perspective of if we, if we look this as a variable. On the type level, uh, this is like just just the constant, right? We, we are saying this x uh, must be a number. So so the number is a type, right? So 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 there is no way that we can uh, specify another uh, 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 another value that has another type. We are saying this is a, a, a very specific, and uh, 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 this is why I'm I'm saying this is a constant because. Uh, uh, we cannot influence this from when we are calling the function. So, so calling the function really is almost the, the same as in uh, dynamically time languages, right? But we are restricting this some some specific type. Uh, in this category, uh, 
uh, I think only the Go languages uh, still doesn't have this uh, uh, way of uh, uh, generics to, to, to specify a, a type that, that is not a specific type, right? Uh, uh, so what I mean is to specify, uh, so this is example in TypeScript. So we can, we can say in TypeScript, uh, this X uh, is not some, some uh, uh, specific type that we have. This can be any A that we can uh, uh, supply when we are calling the function. So this is why I, I'm saying this is a variable because this X is a variable when we are calling the function. So now we are adding another uh, uh, variable, but uh, uh, not accessible on the value level. But we can see it as a, as a variable because when we are calling the function, usually uh, uh, we are omitting this argument. We, 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 are, we are saying, oh, uh, uh, because it's, uh, it can be inferred from the uh, value x, we don't need to, to specify it. But we can, we can do it. We can specify both parameters. We can, we can specify a, a number as the first parameter to the function, and we can specify uh, the value as the second parameter. So we can see that uh, really this, the, the generic types are just another parameters to the function, right? And what, what, is, what, what is even better, uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, dependent type languages, uh, this distinction doesn't exist. So between variables on the type level or, or variables on the, on the value level, th there is no distinction. So we have only, only the variables, or only the pair of parameters to the function, right? So the same thing in Idris can be written in this way, where we are, we are saying that this first variable A has a type type. <laughs> and this X as, as the second uh, parameter has a type A which we are uh, uh, specified as the first parameter. So this is the, exactly the same function, right? And when we are calling the function, we can do exactly the same thing. We can not specify the, the first parameter because it, it can be inferred from the, from the value. But we can also specify it in the same way as we are doing this in, in a, 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 like normal languages like, like C Sharp or Java or, or TypeScript we can specify both parameters. So, <clears throat> uh, uh, is this make sense? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's very clear uh, to have this, uh, those steps. So now I, I understand uh, uh, much more than uh, last week. Cool. Uh, I, I want to show that uh, the same principle of lambda calculus is applied both for values and both for types. So, so in, in our languages that we are using today, C Sharp, Java, or TypeScript, this is not very visible. So, because there is a special syntax for, for these uh, type level variables, and this is another syntax for, for uh, normal values. Uh, so, so we don't see uh, uh, this unification. This is like the same thing. So, and in, in it, it is, this is like more visible. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I didn't mention that uh, this uh, curly braces uh, means uh, uh, this, this is implicit argument and, and it can be inferred. It doesn't have to be specified. So this really tells you how uh, th they are the same thing. You, 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 uh, uh, even syntax is simplified to, 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 to work with that. So, so now I want to show uh, what what is this uh, what, what is the next step and, and what does it mean to have uh, higher kind of types so this is like another uh, like improved version of uh, genetics when when uh, we we have a variable which is not just the type uh, this variable this parameter uh, can be a function Right, so, so we are moving from, from just simple variable to say, oh, this generic, the generic parameter, this A, can be a function. We are used to that in, 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 in our value level stuff. But when we go to type level, then everything is different, right? Everything is strange and 
uh, so uh, in in, uh, in newer newer languages like Idris, this distinction doesn't exist. So so uh, uh, this uh, f parameter that that we were seeing last time in Scala, uh, this is just a parameter on the type level that uh, is like a function. And 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 uh, what what this means like a function? It means that uh, to get the type of this parameter you need to supply another type right so in scala this means there is a nice example uh, when we are looking at this uh, uh, signature of this function so this f is like a function because we are applying this function here we are, we are saying f is a function and uh, we are supplying this as a parameter. So let's go back here in Idris. This is totally visible. We are, we are seeing this f is a function from type to type. Th there is no mystery, right? Uh, 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 we have another uh, uh, parameter, which is just a, like a normal variable. This is not a function. And we are constraining this f to be applicative. So we are doing the same thing as in Scala. We are saying this F must be applicative. So it's just the, the, the different syntax, but we can think about this F as a function, right? We, we have a, a strange syntax, uh, uh, but this is a function. So this is not just normal uh, uh, parametric uh, argument this is like a special so th th this is why uh, it's called higher kind of type because it accepts another type to construct the type but we can just uh, see it as a function it, it's much easier to, to to think about it and uh, uh, what what we are saying uh, uh, we have uh, uh, of course uh, the parameter x which we uh, what we've seen before and the resulting type is like applying the function. F is a function, A is argument. So we are saying the resulting type is FA. Again, no, no mystery. You're just applying a, a type level function, right? So uh, uh, when we are calling the function, we can say, what is this F? This can be uh, option, this can be list, this can be whatever uh, implements applicative interface. Very good. Is yeah. So I, I think I'm uh, I'm following. Um, do you, do you have a, an example in code that um, would illustrate the point, perhaps? Mm -hmm. uh, I can I can show you example in, in, in Idris, but also uh, uh, this is the same thing uh, written in Scala. Mm -hmm. Right, so so this is like a comparison of of, of uh, these two functions. So we are specifying uh, our parameters to the function. We, we first say, oh, this f uh, is this like higher kind of type, this uh, type level function, which must be uh, a column, which must be applicative, and we have additional uh, parameter which is just just a, and resulting type is applying this f type level function to a. And what when we are calling- peer? And what is mm -hmm. peer? Peer, what is peer? x dot peer. Oh, the, the pure is the function from applicative. Uh, applicative interface. So this is the uh, applicative interface. Uh, it has, uh, uh, the, the, this unit is just uh, uh, calling the, the, the pure with uh, unit value. But uh, the only function that, uh, that uh, applicative defines is the, is the pure. I think this is the only one because uh, it extends functor, so map is uh, from functor. 
and, uh, and the pure just means uh, package up whatever you have, this argument uh, inside FA. I should make this bigger. So pure, pure just means uh, take this uh, 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 generic parameter that you have and uh, package up in the, in the F, whatever this F is. So, uh, so I wanted to, 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 uh, to be, to, uh, uh, this example to, to be very, very uh, simple so we can compare it with uh, Idris, right? We, we have the same logic, right? We are specifying what is our F parameter this is here, so this is like a function. You're specifying uh, additional parameter, which is here, this is A. Uh, we are constraining the F uh, to be uh, applicative, we are doing this here. And after that, we have just a normal parameter, uh, the value that uh, 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 we, will, uh, we the, the value that uh, our function accepts. And the resulting type is applying this F to A. So this means that this function is completely generic and only, uh, uh, we are only constraining this F to be applicative. And because, because of that, we can use pure function. And this is exactly the same thing with this. But in, in object-oriented languages, we have this extension functions. So instead of uh, uh, calling the, the static function on some, uh, uh, on some object, we have this uh, ability to, to create extension, so we, so we just say dot uh, you know, name of the function. Uh, so, Tom Slavin, a lot of the code, I also see uh, multiple parentheses next to each other. Do you have an example of that sometime? Uh, what exactly do you mean, multiple? So you, on, on which part? C can, you, can you show me? Uh, so there's Can like a parenthesis, to... X, A, colon, parenthesis, and then there's another parenthesis. I mean, there's, there's more than one parenthesis. Um, uh, not here, right? Yeah, next to, next to that, there'll be another one, I think. I mean, I can, I can show you an example. Um, I'll find it. You can keep going. Mm, okay, okay. Uh, so this is the, 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 the most important thing that I, I, I wanted to show. I, di I didn't want to go, uh, you know, too, too broad, right? I, I, I wanted to connect to, to our previous uh, example from, from last time, where we abstracted in Scala uh, exactly this F type, right, from, from here. And uh, we also had uh, another G. So we, we had in intersection with uh, two uh, higher kind of types, which means like two uh, uh, type level functions. So, so uh, this is basically what, what I wanted to show for, for, for today. Like, uh, uh, just, to, to, just that you see uh, or, or have better understanding what, 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 what we did last time, right? How, how we uh, extracted uh, just the, the interfaces and uh, after that we, we have uh, like generic function which can work with uh, any of these uh, Objects that uh, that implement uh, uh, these interfaces, yeah. and mm -hmm. Look, looks like uh, Arthur put the example in the chat. Yeah, you see, there's a you define service, and then there's a there's one parenthesis around the web API, and then there's another one for implicit. Uh, Implicit as oh, let me I don't I don't understand why there's you know two parentheses. Uh, you mean two parentheses uh, to uh, as 
like two like separate uh, uh, like arguments yeah uh, uh, yeah 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 so if you remember from from the uh, from the last time so yeah but maybe uh, last time I didn't really explain this or or or, or show this so uh, if we have this function, what does it mean to have this applicative uh, constraining this f? This is exactly the same thing as another uh, set of parameters. Uh, this is only in Scala, right? Uh, this just means that uh, this f, uh, for this f, you need to supply uh, the instance uh, for this f. So, uh, so this is uh, syntactic sugar. So you don't need to specify uh, uh, this as additional parameters, as the implicit parameters. And uh, the the rule for specifying implicit parameters is to be uh, at the last uh, at the last position. So first you need to specify non-implicit. Then in another parenthesis you need to specify all the implicit stuff. And as uh, Rafael last time said, this looks very much on the caring function. You, you, you're supplying uh, the, uh, uh, this part of the parameters and then uh, you have the, the, the rest, right? But uh, it's not completely the, the, the caring function because this implicit is like a, like a magic, right? Uh, whatever you have in your scope, if you don't specify this, uh, it will be supplied by, uh, by the compiler. Right? Okay. But uh, uh, this uh, notation is just syntactic sugar to this implicit. And when we are calling the function, so, so this means that when we are calling this function, uh, this parameter must be available. I mean, uh, so uh, uh, I put, uh, put more, uh, more detailed examples how this works. So for example, here, uh, if, uh, so, so first, first, if we are calling this function, example two, we have this implicit uh, applicative parameter. So it is not visible here. We, we are not specifying a, a, as the last uh, argument. So it is, uh, so it will be uh, supplied by the, by the compiler. And compiler has uh, ID as like the, the simplest uh, implementation for applicative. But we can specify uh, uh, this parameter by itself. We can say, oh, no, I will use it. I, I know exactly what parameter I will use it. And this works. This is just another parameter. And of course, we can decide to, to use a different one. We can uh, uh, import uh, applicative for the list uh, call the same function, and now we will have different result, right? Now we have a list of lists because we are using applicative uh, 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 instance for the list. So, so you can imagine that this last parameter is now list, imported with uh, uh, this import. Okay. So, so we are managing uh, instances. And this is exactly what uh, here in Idris we are doing. We are specifying, oh, this f uh, must be applicative and we, we will use the list. So result will be list. Uh, we can use option, with, uh, result will be option. We can use task to be asynchronous and the result will be task of 42. So, so, uh, uh, we have this notion, the, the, same, the same way we are abstracting uh, with a polymorphic type, we can abstract with this function uh, uh, level types, right? And uh, for, for me, that, that was like a very big thing to understand from C sharp and Java, right? Where you have only the, 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 the simple variables. So, so this understanding of, you know, what is the higher kind of type was uh, like a big thing for me. How, how to how can I understand it? So so this way of looking at this as a function, which is 
what what is really is, uh, it's you know it's becoming much much more understandable. Uh, at least for me, I, I, I'm not sure if this works for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, also, uh, I have I, I will put all of this information in the in in, in these uh, examples. Uh, previously, uh, I. I wrote in Haskell the same, almost the same thing. How to abstract, uh, how, can go, how, how can you go from specific, uh, specific structure, uh, in this case, a list of tuples of string and integer. And how can we go and abstract this totally with, uh, 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 with functions? Right? Basically, we, 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 only that we have is a function. So we are abstracting with functions. And uh, at the end, we can, uh, uh, we, can, we can abstract this and have uh, a definition of uh, like a key value store, where we have string and integer as the string as the key and integer as the value. Because we, we, we started from, from a list of string and integer, which looks like a, like a key value, right? And we can we can uh, define in Haskell. This is very nice because we can define this function as the functions as uh, combinators. So uh, if uh, if our uh, dependency is this class with uh, these two functions, which is like in our previous example, uh, this is applicative, this is uh, uh, dependency. We can define uh, our key value store just, just with uh, these uh, combinators uh, functions. So we can say, oh, I have a key A and value one, and I have key uh, value B and value two. So just by, uh, uh, just with the functions. So I, I will put this uh, link also, uh, maybe this is not, uh, so understandable, but uh, you know, you, you can see some, some, some similarities, right? Because at the end, we can use the same function and just by saying it is a different type, uh, there's, the result will be different, right? So, and, and the meaning is different, right? Uh, if, uh, if we have this type, we, if we assign to this function this type, uh, this will get, uh, get us the, the, first, uh, the, the first value from, from uh, uh, our structure. If we are assigning a list, we will get all of the values. If we are assigning just the, the, uh, the integer, uh, we will get the sum of everything. So just by uh, uh, choosing the type, which really means choosing the implementation, we will have the, uh, the same function doing the, the different things. And that, that, that's the whole point of uh, this higher kind of types uh, abstraction. Uh, 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 we don't need to, to say what is the implementation. We are just saying what is the, like the interface and with implementation we can, we can uh, uh, do different things. I hope this uh, uh, also helps a little. <laughs> yep, it's great. Mm. Yeah. Uh, this is all for, for me to, for, for today. I will put all of this information and uh, yeah, I, 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 I put the link here uh, at the end. Uh, here's the link for uh, Greg's, uh, uh, Greg's lecture about monads. So I was thinking for the, for the next time, uh, we can talk about, uh, you know, how can we see monads from this perspective of uh, higher kind of types? So, so how, how this uh, monad abstraction is implemented? with higher kind of types. I, I show you applicative, so now we can just, you know, replace applicative with monads and, you know, we can see what, what exactly monads are. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Thomas Law. And I know um, three or four weeks ago, uh, you compiled all of the, the links and everything into, a, 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 into GitHub and you sh shared that link and I put it in the description for the, that particular video. Um, now, the, the video from last week, I don't know if, if you had a chance to do that um, as far as, I think, you know, there was just, if, if there were resource links or discussions, um, 
I wasn't sure if you were going to do the same thing with the last week or not. Yes. Uh, if, if, yes you did, uh, if you did, yeah. I want to make sure if you had that link to put it into the description of the video from last week. And then with this, you know, with today, if there's any resource links, you know, if you put it into GitHub. You know, so we want to get in the habit of when we upload the video, uh, at some point, usually, you know, it takes, it takes you a little while, you know, to, to uh, put everything together. But for Jim and myself, as administrators, to include uh, the, the, the GitHub links, which have all of the, the resource links for that particular video. That's the... Uh, yes, yes. Uh, thanks, thanks for reminding me. Uh, 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 what, what I was showing you with, uh, in, in this file... Uh, I, I, I added some, some comments and uh, I was not finished. Uh, <laughs> so okay. this is why I, I didn't send it. But so now I, 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 I almost done. So I, okay. I just want to put some, some additional links here and uh, I, I, will, I will put it on Discord and yeah. Uh, Very good. So, and and, and in, uh, YouTube, so it's all the videos are being uploaded to the Divi Dow channel. And I've created a, a series or a, uh, uh, a playlist. A playlist. Thank you. So it's a uh, uh, our chain Scala, uh, our uh, Scala education series. You know, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, we'll, you know, when the video gets uploaded, I check the box for the playlist. So the idea is, someone can go, you know, go to the playlist and hey, now they've got a series. Of, of videos, so um, uh, that's that's Excellent. the goal of, yes. of, of playlists. So you know, little things like that, you know, to help facilitate uh, people coming in behind us who, who want to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, I saw that uh, uh, also now YouTube understands uh, the timings in the comments. And it oh. will display. It will display, uh, you know, for you in the video when you can click and, uh, you know, uh, in what what time something starts, and so you can you can jump on the section that you are interested. So so yeah, I will, I will look I will look into that also so that I can provide more information, not not just the link, but some kind of description or. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, somewhere um, I don't know, someone. Uh, exposed me to that that feature of uh, of YouTube. I'm not sure familiar with how to generate it, but you know it's you have all the points in time in the video. And you click on it. You know you want to go to Monads. You click on you know Monads, yeah, yeah, and it yeah. takes you to that. Part. You know something like that is um, yeah. You know being able to curate the video. Those, those right. are great. Whenever whenever we're watching, uh, a lot of a number of us have edit permissions in the YouTube channel. And whenever you're watching something, you see something starts at minute 58, 30. So you, you hit edit and you go into the description and you put 58 colon 30, Mona, yeah. whatever. And that, right. uh, that puts a link directly to that page. And if we copy and paste that description into a document or something, the link is brought with it. Mm. Yeah, 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 exactly. Cool. Um, so, yeah. hey, I, I have a question there when you guys are done. Yeah, go ahead, Arthur. Uh, can I, can you share my screen? Can I share my screen? Yeah, please do. Yes. Okay, so. Okay, you can see my screen? Yes. Yes. It, so uh, I don't know if you're able to increase the font size at all. Uh, how do you do that in? Yeah, uh, control, the uh, co control and the scroll. Uh, Press con control and scroll up. Or control Shoot. plus, control plus. Or or control plus, yeah. Control plus. No. No. <laughs> huh. I'm not quite sure where plus is uh, here. Control shift. Without shift, that was. I think Thank it you. just went went up a level. If you could do maybe one more, we could probably get by with that. But th there we go. I think you know. It's. I think about the the viewers watching this. They'll they'll appreciate the larger fonts for sure. Right. So um, this 
Uh, let me skip with this. Um, so this code is the uh, the register registry signature generator, and um, and this is for um, insert um, sign. So if I run the if I look at the command for how to run this, which was yeah. So it says for a new contract, you only need to provide the, the contract name, right? So if I run this um, registry signature and I just provide the contract name and in the contract name, I put auction, right? So I put auction there and it generates a, um, you know, it generates the, um, the template that I use to put into my, into my auction, right? So I have the top um, the channel be the name of the auction. And then this is the, um, the output that's generated. And then at the bottom, I um, obviously put the, um, the part that actually does the input, right? Yeah. So this is just standard stuff, right? Now, the problem is, is that this is the, when I run that code, the un this unforgeable name is, you know, CA3, right? But when I execute um, within the, um, uh, you know, if I get a container and I execute the registry um, rolling, and then I execute my auction contract, the registry, it fails because it's not verified. And then I print out the data here. And when I print out the data, the, the value of the data um, gives me, this is an unforgeable name, you know, 5F1, which is obviously not the one that I got from the tool. And so it's not verifying. So I'm not quite sure what what to do. You know, th th this I'm not sure how you know I could take this unforgeable name and put it in the and put it in in here and not use the word con you know, auction. But I'm I'm just not quite sure what what I'm doing wrong. Um, I don't know if you had any ideas about that because clearly this is not verifying correctly. Yeah. So I, I didn't use uh, this tool myself, so. Um... Okay, uh, if you don't know, it's fine. I mean, I'll just keep investigating because it just seems that, you know, what, I, what would be nice if I can just like run this tool, get the template and then use it in my contracts and that's great. But there's just something about the verification that is not correct. And, and I'll, I'll dig into that. I thought uh, uh, if you had any point to that, uh, but, but it is correct. So, right? just, the, the, you're saying it's correct yeah. to just use the name of the auction here. I don't need to um, take the bot code from a protobuf um, representation of my contracts. Yeah, this is done. This is done uh, in Scala, so you don't you don't have to, right? Well, it's it's not. I mean, in this code, it just takes that actual name. It, it's just that name that it uses. So I, I, I'm not right sure uh, that I understand this comment. It's right here, unforgeable name, right? It just takes that unforgeable name and sticks it in here. But you need to sign the whole, uh, the whole, uh, all, all of your code. Yeah, so that's not happening. That, that, when I use this tool, I never give it my code. I just give it the name auction. I never give it the code. But that, that's what I'm suspecting is that when I, I'm, I'm running it from here. This you're saying that the at this star auction here. See that star auction is this unforgeable name. Yeah, this is the first name in the in the contract. Right. So it's it's not even this registration is not passing it all the you know the 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 protobuf. The, the protobuf as bytes, it's not, it's not using it. So, so I'm just not sure what's going on. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, uh, you can see the, the, the rolling code as, uh, so, so the rolling code is a string, but when you, when you uh, send your code to, to R node, it, it is immediately translated to, uh, to protobuf types. I mean, to, to AST, to AST, because uh, okay. uh, our AST is defined with protobuf. This is why we are, we are talking about protobuf, because we are using protobuf to, to define uh, rolling AST. 
And I'm not completely sure with these two when this happens. I, 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 I didn't have time to, to, to look at this in the details. So right, yeah, I'm I, I should definitely do that. No, because it, it doesn't happen in the tool because I never give it my file with my Roland code in it. I, I just give it the name auction. That's all, because that's all it says. I mean, this, this, this over here does not say, give, give me the file with the Roland code. It just says, give me the name. Right, this says, just only provide the contract name. And here's the example yeah. of my contract. Yeah, this is confusing for me. I'm, I'm not sure for new contracts, uh, uh, only pro provide contract name. This is... Okay, but my investigation should go along that, along that this contract name that I provide, I should rather, I should actually provide the name and the code. <laughs> but, but I didn't know. Where, which, where, is, where is the code? I'm not sure. Yeah, in this tool, it doesn't take the code. But if I did provide the code, is it just the, um, is it just the Rolang with all my auction contracts in it? So, so basically all this, I, I create, Hmm. It oh, must be the, the whole. Oh, you know, you're saying the, the whole, whole thing from okay. Yeah, because okay. You, you want to, you you need some kind of hash of that so that you can be sure that this is the same code. Well, the thing is, it can't be the whole one because that has. It's it's kind of it's got all this in it as well. I'm trying to get this from the code, right? So, I, I thought that I'd only need to provide that. Very confusing, <laughs> but I think we can figure it out. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe I can I can ask uh, uh, Mike Mike Stay about that. Yeah, it will really help. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know, for, for, uh, at least for now, uh, I didn't have something, uh, uh, some some reason to to look at this code. So, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, yeah, we we didn't update it any any of the. Uh, any of the contracts that are already uh, created. So, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, but then you know, my, my understanding yeah. is, my, I just want to make sure my understanding is correct, is that this nonce, uh, it seemed to be that every time you wanted to use the same name, um, you would increment the nonce, but in the blessed yes. contract, this nonce is the maximum number, so you can't increment it anymore. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Okay. yeah. So this one, I could just start from one and then do two and things, okay. Yeah. So now, yeah, uh, this is the reason why we cannot update uh, current uh, proof of stake. Right. For example, to, to, uh, to decrease uh, epoch length, uh, we, need to, we need to deploy another, uh, an, another name for, for proof of stake. And this is like a bigger change, much bigger change. Right, right, right. Okay, but so what I'll do is I'll spend my time trying to figure out how how this, how this unforgeable name was obtained <laughs> when this RS call was made. But when I use this thing, it gives me a different unforgeable name. Did okay. you find, uh, did, 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 uh, do you know for documentation for this on Jira? Uh, I'm not yeah, sure if this is helpful. No, no, I'd, I'd read all that documentation and all the stuff on um, Discord. It's just yeah. no, nothing ever. Um, DC, is it the DCK? That, that, uh, um, D, is it DCK? Um, the DCKC? Alien? Uh, yeah. Dan Collins. Dan Collins. He seems to know what's going on, but he's also not, at some point, he never posted something that said exactly what it should be done. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, we are all, we are all escaping the, <laughs> the answer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, I, 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 I will try to find some time and, uh, you know, uh, try this thing and, you know. <laughs> yeah, they were really, some, some really helpful, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, I, I, was, I was also looking at, at, at uh, the source code and I was find out that uh, Dan was doing some of this uh, stuff in, in uh, right. Archer repository. So right. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping that he will he will say some something about that. Okay, and and so then the other part is that uh, you know the, the 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 pull request that I did for exposing um, uh, propose um, or, uh, with HTTP. Um, you know, because I've not been pull pull request that often, I kind of lose track of exactly all the steps that I need to do in order to to get that. 
Uh, your, yeah, your, your PR is great. Uh, I only have, uh, uh, I just look at uh, briefly and uh, uh, you need to sign uh, the commits. This is something right. that I saw. It's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you, need, you need to specify GPG key. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe on, on Windows this is like more challenging, but uh, you can find GitHub uh, uh, instructions, which are, okay. which are pretty good. It just, it just means like, you have another uh, a private key for for uh, for for this part of uh, uh, Git uh, process, right? Okay. Okay. And and uh, I, I, I think that, that, that that's it. Uh, so uh, you provided the uh, the link for for Jira ticket. So this is like the the, the basic stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You have okay. tests and yeah, uh, yeah. I, I was, I, was uh, uh, I wanted to ask Will to to you know to to uh, review this in details and uh, tell you if uh, you know something else. Would be, okay, cool. Good. Thanks. But yeah, you, you you're doing a great job. Yeah. Okay. And uh, by two hex, I approved uh, this PR. Okay. And. Cool. Uh, uh, I could I could just run uh, our bores uh, bores tools for 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 merging uh, bores R plus, but uh, I wanted to ask you if uh, you can try to do it. I, uh, this will probably fail, but uh, we can we can we can test uh, this command that uh, you know some uh, 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 some of us who 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 are allowed to uh, to to start the R plus R plus. Uh, we can give you like we can delegate uh, this ability for specific PR. So we can we can test if this works, and uh, after that you can you can uh, just run both R plus and uh, your PR will be merged. Okay, great. So I I I, I, I I'm using this opportunity to test uh, all of this process, right? So okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Arthur, for uh, uh, for the bytes to hex. That's that's having us from. Uh, from a lot of different uh, areas to, to, to figure things out. So, okay. Good. Yeah, now we are, we are creating these templates for our chip. So, you know, we will, we will have more, more structure when you, when you are uh, proposing something or so. Uh, we, we, we will also have discussions of how, what can we improve and, you know, it, does these templates are solving all of our problems and can we, can we do something else? Yeah. Cool. Exactly. Yes, indeed. So, Stevie, I, I used uh, your PR as the source for uh, issue templates because you you you, you created a, a file in inside the repository. So, uh, for the like the first step is to have issue templates, and then we can push like files and uh, whatever uh, we want. But uh, now I'm thinking how to make it more simple, and then you know progress. Well, when that came up last week, I didn't even know that that was uh, available, you know, uh, uh, issue templates. So I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, you know, that's uh, so, and so, yeah, I'm glad you, um, you're, 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 you're several steps uh, above me on, you know, I'm just kind of down here, you know, taking orders and trying to, you know, I'll make it, you know, do this and do that. But I'm, I'm glad that you, you kind of see the bigger picture. And, and that's what we what we need. So good. And and I cool cool. I, yeah. So I'm, I'm I still have to look at a, a, some of your your recent work that you did to, to get oriented. But yeah, I think, mm -hmm. yeah, we're getting there. And uh, please, uh, uh, I, I made the PR for issue templates because issue templates are also part of the repository in okay. like yeah. this specialized specialized fo folder uh, dot GitHub. And in, inside issue templates is the folder. So, so there is like special location where you can put these uh, files and then they're visible as uh, issue templates. So, yeah. so please uh, uh, comment on this PR, whatever, you know, ideas or, or you know. And, and since we're in the ed education um, session now, what I think is as once we work through the, you know, get the templates together and, and kind of get a process, then, you know, this would be a great venue to say, okay, everybody, um, when you have, um, you know, issues with uh, our chain platform, this is the process. 
uh, when you want to create a, uh, an R chip, this is the process. So uh, once, once we, we kind of get those worked out, and uh, this is a good way to introduce the community to, uh, to the, these new uh, processes and to, to up them as, thing, as things change. So, uh, and just so everyone who knows who's, you know, people will be listening to this on replay, uh, a lot of these uh, tech governance related uh, topics are being worked through and worked out in our Thursday tech governance session. So that's the, the, the hour where we, we kind of identify from a tech governance standpoint, what are the things that we need to, to improve as far as tech governance. So we're working through some of the uh, templates and uh, uh, processes there. And then once we have those uh, uh, put together, then in the education session on, here on Tuesdays, that's, this is where the venue to introduce the community is like, okay, this is the process we have in place. You know, work through it. Uh, then, then, you know, we want to get feedback to, to improve the process and so forth. So it, it'll be kind of a, a, a symbiotic relationship between tech governance and then education, people actually using it uh, as we, we kind of uh, uh, improve everything as we move along. So, so maybe I can share the screen and just show a little bit. So this is the PR with, uh, oh, Rao made some comments, cool. Uh, so this is the PR with uh, these templates. Okay. Just, uh, uh, I'm not saying this is the final thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I also put uh, the, 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 the Discord link here. So, you know, if you want to join discussion or, I, I, I was not sure, you know, what exactly we can do. So, so you know. Yeah, well, this comments. is good. <laughs> I, I, I think uh, in, in including, you, you know, the viewers, uh, into you know, uh, you know how how does all this behind the scenes stuff happen? So the more that they have an under understanding or appreciation insight to this, you know they can start to uh, participate. And I think that's that's ultimately the the big picture is uh, community participation. So you know we're we're starting to create a framework, a structure for for people to participate. And uh, we, we want to uh, make that easy and facilitate that. And because, you know, we, once the, the structure is created and then it, it starts to get used, then we're, then we're, we're uh, now we're at a different level of engaging with the, the community. So uh, this, this is all the, the direction that we're headed towards. So it, it, it all, um, uh, this is what it's all about, you know, being a, being a co-op. Being an open source project, that's a co-op. You know, th this is uh, lots of lots of hands. As Jim says, lots of hands make for light work. So uh, this this yeah. is um, this is how we're uh, how we're going to get to where we we ultimately want to be. So, so um, yeah, that, yes. What hap what happens if, if you click on uh, the, the get started button in your uh, in the the GitHub uh, template? Uh, here, oh, uh, so uh, uh, GitHub will fill in whatever you have in your template. Oh, nice! So, because I'm so, going to soon. I'm going to write the proposal for uh, 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 you know uh, uh, regex validation. So I want to know how. To yeah. So so uh, uh, idea is to to just so my my, my reasoning was. Uh, this ask a question is uh, uh, like empty template. It's, it's just have two comments to say, oh, you know, be understandable. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, 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 like the next level is if you have something you think about, like you want to improve, but you don't have all of the information, this is like the first step, right? To, to create some kind of idea of what you want, right? So we can comment, mm -hmm. we can discuss, we can say, oh, this is like totally doesn't make sense or this is like a great thing. We can, right. you know, move forward. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, uh, the other one is like, like complete proposal. You have everything, you know, what you want and there is a much bigger template. What, what, what you uh, used from, from Scala. Right, where, where really just the templates just give you the titles and each title has some kind of uh, 
short description what what does it mean you know how 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 can you put something for for, for this title and uh, yeah it's it's pretty detailed so so we can discuss if this all of this makes sense or not or uh, i filtered out some some stuff for scala which doesn't make too much sense and uh, and uh, rao rao uh, told me that this also is not completely understandable and i agree so if we can if we can come up with better text, I'm totally for that. So, <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll, uh, but, when I go in there, I'll look at it and see what I can do. Uh, but we, we want to have uh, some kind of structure that, you know, it's always the same, right? The, the mm -hmm. title is in the same format and, you know, so, something that we can, you know, always know what, 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 what the meaning of that. So, yeah. Right. So, so this is the, the, this is the, the template. And, uh, uh, and this is in the PR as the files in the in this folder github issue template and they are presented by uh, by the ordering uh, in the file system so this is why the, the numbers are in front and uh, and this is like the templates and there is a, another way to specify links so they, they are not this is not the template but this is the link to something uh, uh, and this is the display in this way. So I just put a link to this code. So when you when you click on that, you will get the new window with uh, this code link. And this is just my idea. So you know maybe this is that. <laughs> yeah. Well, this this is uh, it, the whole idea is to get something and to kind of get the ball rolling that we can kind of think about and 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 work with. And then, and then we start getting feedback. And then, you know, it, then if there's an improvement that needs to be made, but you know, we can do that. But at least we have something to to work towards improving upon. So, you know, it's it's all about you know, getting that forward momentum. Uh, so, we, so we're this is good. Uh, and uh, yeah, I want to mention that uh, when we when we create uh, issues, uh, we can use the labels. Uh, this is like a predefined labels, but uh, I was thinking maybe maybe we can create a label to 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 have some kind of a uh, level of uh, uh, level level of uh, uh, acceptance or something like that, right? Okay. But, uh, so that we we need some kind of uh, 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 categorizing, right? Uh, uh, when you when you choose uh, the, this uh, question, uh, you will automatically get a label question as defined with the template. If you choose a proposal, you will get a predefined enhancement. And so so we can we can think about you know how can we use this label for for you know grouping stuff, categorizing because uh, when when you look in the issues. Uh, Labels are uh, a way to no this one. Uh, labels are a way to uh, filter the, the stuff, so you can easily just say, "Oh, I want to see enhancement," and that's it. Right. E exactly. Uh, so, and I think uh, Ian's on on the line. So, uh, just to touch base. So, I submitted the um, the GitHub. Uh, user IDs for for everyone that was on text governance call last Thursday. I think there's a few of a few more of us here. Uh, it's so those individuals could be able to uh, add labels and so forth. So uh, I guess I, I guess it's uh, um, I don't know. Ian, are, are you able to speak to you know um, authority on issuing labels and? you know how we can go in and edit labels and things like that yeah everyone on the list that you gave me uh should have that permission you yourself uh you didn't put yourself on that list oh. Steve. Oh. okay <laughs> i i forgot it um yeah I, yeah and i'm i'll it, it, do you want me to send you um yeah, for a detailed record uh, uh, a DM to add Steve Henley or just a verbal request, would that be sufficient? No, no problem. What's, what's your GitHub ID? Uh, Steve Henley with capital okay. S, capital H. Okay. All right, I got you. So, 
one of the challenges that, that I'm facing is I'm, I'm new to GitHub. You know, I'm, I'm working through becoming more familiar with it, but you know, with anything new, you know, it's, it's disorienting until I get sort of find where things are and find my place. So, uh, you know, so speaking of labels, so now that every, every, all of us uh, have access to labels, um, so it, I guess it's you know, identifying what we want the labels to be. You know, right now they're just, you know, defaults, standards. So if we can start to customize those and start to identify a practice on, you know, what based on these uh, classifications, you know, just what Tom Slott was saying, you know, you know, various levels, you know, how do we want to define uh, and, and incorporate levels uh, uh, in, in uh, with our GitHub? And maybe that in itself is a, 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 a 20 minute session here on, on education. Uh, it's like, okay, here's, here's introduction to labels in GitHub. And and what what's all about that? So I think we're we're working through the mechanics of that right now. But I think that that would be something um, in, in, in understanding how to get oriented for issues and you know questions and so forth. And then you know as a as a member for community, I issue a, you know I have a question, I submit a question, and then I start seeing labels start popping up. You know what what are these labels and what do they mean? So we can work towards as we as we develop this program of, of labels and the significance of them. Use this as an opportunity to spend twenty minutes to, to educate everyone. So that's how I kind of see us, us, you know, moving things along. <coughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, we, we will use labels on the Arch repository also when we open the issues. Uh, we, we need labels to, to, to split, you know, just the questions and uh, on, on working items or so, so we, we, will, we will definitely need to use uh, labels. Right, and, and that, uh, thanks for mentioning that. So, and that was another piece. So I saw that you're working on the, uh, uh, the R-Chain R repository, the main repository for uh, uh, templates and so forth, for is uh, template is issue, templates, template issues. So, there, you know, you're 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 coding away. You <clears throat> you you're, you you have an issue with the the uh, the core <clears throat> uh, the, the core platform uh, core code. You want to open up an an, an issue. Uh, uh, so and then you know you, with your issue now you start to see these labels start popping up and you know what is significance. So uh, ideally, uh, you know, maybe there'll be some sort of the common understanding between understanding of labels between the main GitHub repository and then the RChip repository. You know, as we you know start to figure it out, it'll start to make sense. But uh, but yeah, it, it's it, yeah, all, all this is good, and I think uh, we're we're moving moving things along. So good to see how. Yeah, and, uh, also you reminded me. Uh, I will uh, for for uh, so now we are working on the last finalized state. Uh, we have, we, uh, so, so uh, that zipper is working on uh, uh, improvement for, for block, uh, block retrieval and uh, we are also working on uh, block, block merging. So okay. uh, I, will, I will create specification, I will put specification on our chip proposal. First as the issues and we can, later we can move it to files and whatever. But uh, uh, I want this, I want to do this uh, 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 to, uh, to Archip, so that this can also be like an example, you know, how, how we want to, to develop new features, right? We want to specify all of the cases, whatever we know, we can have some discussion and, uh, you know, we can specify what we are doing, right? What, yes, what is that's our work? Exactly. You know, it's, it's understanding the tools that we're using uh, and how to incorporate them into, uh, into our processes. You know, I, I'm kind of, um, I think of myself as a as a use case. Uh, you know, I'm so uh, caught up in the world of uh, GitHub or uh, of Google Docs. You know, whenever I want to do something, I go to that's like my go-to tool. But now we're creating, we're using GitHub, and you know, things are starting to reside on GitHub for the community. You know, for for the world to see. So my initial instinct, you know, my two instinct is to go to 
to, to, to Google Docs, but now I'm like, wait a minute, I, I need to be going towards GitHub. So it, it's this almost this retraining that's going on. Mm. And, and we're, yeah. we're kind of uh, helping each other saying, hey, instead of using you know, that old tool, hey, use this new tool because this is what you can do with it. And it's, it's mm. like, oh, okay. That, I mean, and, and it's, it's all towards you know, making, uh, making things more uh, facilitating these processes, making them easier. And then ultimately, you know, they're, they're becoming available uh, for the world to see, you know, this is open source. And, uh, and, and then what will happen is in time, we'll start to, you know, it'll pick, I'll pick up steam. As we kind of work through this, you get comfortable with it, we'll, other people will come into the fold and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and this yeah, friction yeah. that we have will start to go away. So, uh, so yeah, I think it's, this is all, uh, all sort of a retraining uh, and retooling so it's it's all good. Yeah, I mean, in some, in some aspects, uh, Google Docs are, you know, more, you know, for, easier to, to use or, 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 or I don't know for, for some kind well, of uh, collaboration comments or, but yeah. No, well, thanks for actually you made a good point, and Ian mentioned that the other day. I was kind of te you know communicating this to Ian, but Ian pointed out it's like, hey. Even though you've got these, you know, new tools to work with GitHub and so forth, GitHub Docs for collaboration, it can't be beat. I mean, it, that is, it's still, every tool has its strength. And, and the, I think the key takeaway is understanding what tools you have at, at, at your exposure and knowing what their strengths are. So, yes. you know, yes. for, you know, for creating a document that we need to collaborate, we got nine people on the call, maybe even more, you know, to, to collaborate and move things around and add comments. Hey, you know, Google Docs, it still has, it still has its strengths, but GitHub, you know, uh, for, you know, for creating these issues, open source, make it uh, widely available, you know, so it's, it's, it's kind of yeah. as an individual, you have to kind of learn what the tools are and when to use what, yes, you know, yes. you don't use a hammer when you need to use a screwdriver, you know, it's yes. you, you, eventually you, yeah. you, you learn when to use uh, the tool that yeah, you need. Yeah. 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 For example, if, if, if you want to, if you want to show some code, uh, then GitHub is, is definitely way to go because there you can, you can, uh, you can put snippets in the code, uh, which is highlighted and, you know, for, so, so for this kind of work, GitHub is the, the best. Exactly. Uh, sorry, sorry, Jim. Um, yeah, I was just going to say that you know, if you're doing real-time collaboration, GitHub's the wrong way. Google Docs. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. And you yes. know, if you have people involved that don't, you know, can't use GitHub, then you're sort of stuck with Google Docs. But um, yeah. uh, we yeah. should bring people into the fold so they can use uh, the uh, GitHub uh, uh, better. Which is asynchronous collaboration. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And and and, and it's uh, for the the new people coming into the fold. It's you know what a great way to introduce them to them is when they have a question. You've got a question to ask. Here's a, a question template for on issues, and then they they get that exposure. So you know we're mm -hmm. uh, as as you know you know. Kind of a team here it, it's incumbent on us to identify what the challenges are of the people coming up behind us are and holding their hand you know and, and walking them along until they feel comfortable comfortable enough to say oh okay i get it you know i can i can go and spread my wings and fly so but uh i think we're doing fine yeah uh, it's we're, we're figuring all these out uh but we're we're, we're getting there yeah i think we're doing yeah, good i agree i agree yeah Good. So uh, we're a little past the hour. So and we are, we have an agenda item for next week. Thank you, Thomas Law. So uh, another good session. So um, uh, and and um, so uh, Thomas Law, if you compile, I'll, I'll reach out to you in Discord, perhaps if you compile uh, the the resource links. Uh, I'll, either Jim or I, we want to be sure to incorporate those into uh, the description for. 
any previous the, the video from last week and this video as, as well. So, but you know, it's no, based on you know we can always go in and, and add that. So at your convenience. Yeah. Okay. Theo, thanks. Uh, thanks. I'm sorry, uh, Theo. Could you send me uh, back the the link about uh, regex uh, hacking? You know, uh, injection uh, regular expression. Uh, you forgot. <laughs> You could I use Falcon and find it easily. Let's see. <laughs> what was the page about? I don't uh, say again. Um, about uh, regular expression, um, you know, um, uh, maybe hacks or vulnerabilities. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm interested, uh, Rafael, I'm interested how, how can we uh, uh, measure the cost of uh, regular expression, so. Yeah, that's it. I, I will just have a, a small word about it and then uh, we will be free to comment uh, in, the, in the GitHub issue. Cool. Good. So, um, uh, Theo, are, are, I guess, are, are you looking for the, the document? Yeah, I have ton of pages saved. Okay. So, uh, okay. so, so send yeah, him all of them. You'll send it in, in uh, Discord or... Uh, okay, very good. I anything else, anybody? Any other uh, thoughts or questions or concerns? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. So, so to show Monas, what, what is the preferred language? What, what do you want to see? Uh, TypeScript, Kotlin? <laughs> I mean, we will talk about in Scala definitely, but uh, maybe we can talk about in some other language. Uh, on my side, yes, the, the best uh, parallel to do is with TypeScript because I work with it every cool. day, and I, I think it's. But but I, I'm not familiar with the you know the the maybe uh, some uh, developers coming to the Archean ecosystem will be more familiar with Kotlin or Haskell. Okay, okay. So, so I, I, I'm, I, I'm thinking to not just, you know, have one session about monads and then forgot. So I, I want to come back to all of this stuff, right? To higher kind of types and uh, repeat and, you know, it's much e easier to, to understand if we are, you know, circling our, our, around all of these issues and not just, you know, oh, this is like a monads. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, uh, in the notes, uh, there is a link for uh, with uh, for for uh, 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 Greg's presentation of Monad. So this is this is not uh, the prerequisites, but uh, you know you can watch it uh, for for you know and see some connections. So so we can talk about this also. I, I need to remind myself for for this lecture, so I can you know I can know what what Greg was talking about there. Yeah. Very good. Because Greg was uh, 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 comparing uh, monads with uh, uh, nesting of uh, XML, so this is like a very good analogy to, to understand. It. So, yeah. Okay, and uh, looks like Theo found the the link, so he put it in in the, in the chat for uh, for Theo. Nice, thank you, Theo. Yeah, thanks, Theo. Very good. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. So. Uh, uh, another great session. Hey, Gary. Uh, so look forward to seeing everybody here uh, next week. Uh, have a great week. Talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.